Private member statements. I call the member for Orange. Thank you, Madam Temporary Speaker. I wish to draw the attention of the House to the fact that today I lodged a petition on behalf of the Amalgamation No Thank You group in the Cabon Council area. The group is opposed to an amalgamation between Orange and Cabon Councils. The petition contains approximately 2,600 signatures from around the Cabon Shire. I should state that I do not have a blanket opposition to all forced council amalgamations, and indeed there may very well be good reasons why councils should merge, particularly in heavily populated areas where there is a significant duplication of services in a relatively small geographical area. However, what may be true for the city should not necessarily be true for the country, and one size does not fit all, and each potential merger should be assessed on its merits. In the case of both Orange and Cabon councils, these merits were assessed in the report of Morrison and Lowe, Morrison Lowe dated uh, May 2015. I believe that many residents of Cabon would like me to raise some of the relevant points, and I do so tonight. The Morrison Lowe report uh, states at page five that both councils can meet the fit for the future benchmarks throughout the period from now until 2023, as there is no funding gap. And in addition, each council is showing an operating performance funding surplus for the modelling period, providing increased discretionary funding if required. The report goes on to state at page seven that both councils carry low levels of debt with Cabon having almost none at all. It states further that both councils meet fit for the future benchmarks debt servicing ratio, ratios, which I think is very positive. The Morrison Lowe report also points out at page 12 that Cabon will meet all of the benchmarks over the period until 2023, with Orange Council projected to meet all of the benchmarks over most of the modelling period. At page 18, the report goes on to state that neither council has a funding gap between what is spent currently and what we estimate uh, to be needed. The costs and savings of a merger are set out in page nine of the report, and the results are that the savings are modest. And this reflects the fact that country LGAs often possess very different characteristics to their city cousins. In terms of scale and capacity, the Morrison Lowe report states that the combination of Orange and Cabon has limited impact on improving scale and capacity overall. And that reference can be found on page 51 of the report. In terms of population growth and forecasts, the uh, report states that a key factor in whether a council is fit for the future is whether an LGA has a declining population and therefore a declining rate base. Both councils are forecast to experience significant growth until 2031, with Cabon's growth forecast at 24.5% and Orange's at 17.4%. And that is found in the Morrison Lowe report at page 24. I think many residents of Cabon would like me to also raise concerns about uh, the impact a potential merger would have in terms of uh, that leading to a loss of a sense of belonging to village communities and a loss of community generally. The loss of services and infrastructure such as swimming pools uh, and also their representation. And in this regard, I note that Cabon residents currently have 12 councillors focusing on their needs and they fear that their ability to influence key decisions uh, could be diminished and diluted under any merger proposal. Uh, and these, uh, uh, Madam uh, Temporary Speaker, are real and genuine concerns that Cabon communities feel very strongly about. Uh, the relevant parts of the Morrison Lowe report were contained in my submission to IPART, and I've also personally sent them to both Minister Toole and Mr Boxall, the chairman of IPART. I would like to uh, thank the Amalgamation No Thank You group for their community concern and community spirit. I've met with them a number of times, and I've also attended uh, meetings which they have organised. And I think it's very important for country communities to be discussing these issues that affect uh, their representation and indeed the shape of their communities. And I think that overall the discussion uh, and the, uh, the debate has been uh, in a very positive light. And I think it's very important that councils have these discussions uh, so that all of the issues, the relevant issues, can be ventilated. And indeed, uh, in the case of Orange and Cabon, these issues have been crystallised in that report of Morrison Lowe. And uh, I would like to uh, thank all parties uh, for their interest uh, in this particular topic. And I want to uh, assure that the concerned members of Cabon that have met with me, and also those that have signed the petitions, that their voices are being heard in Macquarie Street and their voices will continue to be heard. Thank you.